I want to talk to you a little bit about a responsibility that we have as the armoring practitioners. So the armoring is a very intense practice and as such the armoring practitioners we need to take responsibility seriously for the well-being of our clients. You need to understand that as a therapist in this work you exert huge amount of power over your client. I know this sounds like a power game, but actually that's almost how it is. Because this is the armory, this is not a massage. And the client really needs to let go and feel super safe if they are to actually go into the inner process and trauma and release. So that means that you need to be super sharp about who you are, where you come from, what are your boundaries, and communicate it super clear with them. At every second, millisecond, like what are you doing? Where are you? Are you conscious? Are you aware? Are you honoring the boundaries? Are you responsible? So this topic of responsibility, you really need to take, you don't need to, but from my heart I ask you, as a human to human, please take it seriously. The other thing to know is that the armoring, because it's such an intense practice and intense uh, work, if you make a mistake, the difference in making a mistake and doing the good work sometimes is less than one second in time. And once you make a mistake, it's too late to go back. So you're drilling the point, and if you go a little bit too deep, a little bit too fast, but seriously, this happens like difference between they just go and as soon as it happen, it's too late, you lost them. They don't trust you, they close down, and you might not ever open them in this session or never again. So you really need to take it seriously, like the, the, the whole topic of responsibility and the client-centered approach. Because it will save a lot of hassle for you and it will make you a great therapist, you know? One of the easiest ways for me, and I had to learn it hard way, was to actually, to, uh, to accept this responsibility, is to accept that the client is in charge of the session. They're the boss. I'm just in service. So if I can drill it in my little head that they're the boss, then I have to listen to them. And when I start listening to them, it's easier to be responsible <coughs> because responsible, again, it's an interesting English word. I don't know if it works in Swedish or other languages, but responsible, response, able, able to respond. So if I'm responsible, all it means is I'm able to respond to a certain situation at a certain time. And in this case, you need to respond to a client. The client doesn't have to respond to you. Because then you're not responsible. Then you're selfish. Mm. So being responsible is focusing, it's client-centered approach. Client is in charge. I'm in service. Mm. So if you have it like that, then it's going to be less of a chance you're going to make mistakes. The other level of responsibility is uh, it's easy to take someone into the pain body. That's not really difficult. You just have to press hard enough somewhere on the body and they will go into the pain body. This in itself, um, it's just first part of the job. The responsibility part of this, this uh, action comes into it that you need to help them and you need to hold them in the process of going through the pain body, going through the emotions, going through whatever they're going through in a safe way. So I need to extend my container. It's almost like my body extends and, and becomes, I take the whole client inside my energy field and I hold them like I hold a little child with love, with protection, with feeling of safety. And I can only do that if I actually care about the client. So the biggest part of responsibility is actually care for the client. I'm their servant. They're in the charge of the session. And they came to me hoping that I'm going to be able to hold them in whatever process they are going through in a responsible, st steady and safe way. So they're trusting me. They don't really know what is going to happen in the session and what's going to come out and nor do I, but they are trusting me as a session giver that whatever happens, I can deal with it. And so 
it's part of the responsibility of the practitioner to, once I take them into the pain body, to really stay with them at all times. And I mentioned this in other videos, is this comes from deepening my own container, uh, working through my own layers upon layers upon layers of my own pain body, of my own resistance to life, which then enables me to actually hold space for someone else. If I, do that, if I do that correctly, and if I do it in a smooth way, then a possibility of re-wounding a client won't be there. The reason I'm placing so much importance and emphasis on responsibility is because many practitioners, the Amory practitioners, actually re-wound people because they don't know how sensitive and how fragile the client actually is when they start going into the inner states. They're very fragile. They're like little children. And if you think about it, that most traumas and uh, yeah, most traumas are really created out of lack of love, and they happen usually when we are young. So very often when I'm dealing with clients and their traumas, I'm actually dealing with a very small child, like a few months old or a few years old. Even though it's a grown body, but the part of the psyche, part of the emotional, energetic part that I'm working on, it's actually very small. It's a baby. It's tiny. So I need to treat it like that. I need to approach every client, every situation, as if I'm dealing with a child and I'm a responsible parent. So I do everything I can to really take care of that, to take care of them. And even to take care of the things that they might not be aware of in themselves. For example, when we talk about sexual energy, there is nothing wrong including sexual energy in the sessions and the armoring, large part of the armoring is sexual de armoring. The responsibility part for me as a session giver comes if I cannot control my own sexual energy. That shouldn't happen in a session because that actually is emotional rape and it's underhanded taking. And I'm not here to take, I'm here to give. So <clears throat> this again will take a lot of practice. But what that means is that if the client starts getting sexually turned on, this is not an invitation for me to start getting turned on and to start having my own little sexual, sensual way with them. That's not responsible. There I'm failing as a therapist. So I need to learn to master my own sexual energy and to be able to control it. So that's another huge part of responsibility. And I've made many mistakes on that level in my practice. And I know that many other Diamorin practitioners do the same. So then again, there is no responsibility, there is no safety. Um, that's not the way to do it. In sexual Diamorin, it happens very often that, or <laughs> in work, in a Diamorin session, the sexual energy can arouse in a client. And we agree the boundaries before the session. We agreed, for example, that we're going to work on the pelvic area, we're going to stay fully dressed, and there's not going to be any nudity. However, throughout the session, the client might get turned on, which is okay. And then they might start asking for more than we agreed at the beginning of the session, like touch me in sexual parts, turn me on, even maybe put, take, take my clothes off and put my fingers inside me, or something like that. And they really want it, they really are turned on, they're really like, yes, yes, I want it, do it to me, yes. If I did it, I'm actually overstepping the boundary, I'm not taking care of them, because a couple of days after the session, and they come down and the cycle completes, they start integrating, and then they sit at home and think, like, what did I actually do? I didn't want that. I, did, I actually felt intruded on. I feel not raped, but I definitely didn't want it. So, can you see how when they were here, they were saying, yes, I want it, yes, yes, I want it. But the part of the brain that was saying that wasn't actually the one that is a responsible adult in their, in their life. So, very often in sessions, I really need to stick to the plan, if you like. If we agree that we're going to do one thing in a session, I'm going to stick to it. 
And then if the client is begging me and asking for stuff that we didn't agree, it's part of my responsibility to say, no, we agreed on something and no, I'm not going to do it. Once we stop the session, we can talk about it and we say, okay, something started happening in the session. In the next session, if you like, we can work on that. But we're going to agree to it before we actually start the session. And that's a very, very big part of <coughs> setting the boundaries because that protects a client and the conscious and unconscious desires. In this case, there was an unconscious desire. It protects me as a practitioner because people can trust me. The responsibility is quite, it's very, it runs deep in this work because it's so intimate work. So, so um, you're dealing with real people and real lives and real hearts and real pain. And the reason, usually the reason all that stuff happened is because somebody else was irresponsible to them in the past, whether it's a parent, whether it's a, a bully, whether it's whatever happened in life. But usually all these traumas happen because somebody else acted without responsibility towards my client. So I don't want to do that. I want to completely give them an imprint of a solid, loving, grounded, responsible, father and the mother at the same time, like a parent. So when they come to me, they can really relax. I'm going to look after them in every way I can. I'm going to keep my integrity totally sharp, 100% clean. I invite you to think about it. I invite you to think all the possible clients you could have, all the possible situations you could have, and to really think deeply, how can I be more responsible? How can I be even more uh, safe, really safe. So the person that comes to me, I want to minimize as many potentials to screw things up because it very easily happens in the armoring. I told you it happens so fast, changes happen like toof, 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 toof. And any of those toofs, if I miss it and I rewound, it's too late. Once I've rewounded, once the trust had been broken, once I failed to come from my center, even if it's for a millisecond and client feels it, poof, they're gone. I mean, what that means is that they don't trust me anymore. And if they don't trust me anymore, they're not going to open to me anymore or in front of me. So therefore the session from then on is shallow. And so the responsibility part, really think about it and ask me questions. If you have any more questions about the whole of this topic, just write them underneath the video and I'll, I'll respond, I'll, because it really is important.